Amanda from Pontes Books here with our last video on chapter five. And today we're looking at a current event that relates to the events of chapter five of Prince and the Pauper. So in chapter five, we have who they believe is Edward, but is actually Tom kind of, we see what's happening with him for the first time in the book. The last few chapters have been all about Edward and what's happening to him outside the palace wearing Tom's clothes, but we haven't really seen what happens with Edward. So chapter five is our first opportunity to do that. So he talks to a number of different characters, one of them being King Henry VIII, and tries to convince them of who he actually is and tries to explain this miscommunication and that he's not meaning to do any harm and he hopes that they're not gonna kill him for this, but please just let him go home. Uh, because he is not Edward, right? He's convinced of that because he's actually not. So there's a little bit of dramatic irony here because we know obviously that this isn't Edward, but all the other people who are in the palace think it is. And they think that for some reason he has suffered some sudden memory loss. So that's what we're looking at today are modern examples or modern-ish examples of people who have actually experienced a sudden memory loss. So the first person that we can take a look at is Amy Losak. Not sure if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but she in um, 2020 was the most recent time, uh, actually suffered some um, kind of immediate and temporary memory loss. So she had hours passed where she had no recollection of what had happened. She almost just blacked it out entirely and she still was doing things in that time, but she just had no memory of it. And this actually happened to her twice, once in 2016 and once in 2020. So she found that in the time in between, um, like I said, she would be doing something, but she would completely forget about it. So her and her husband were in the midst of uh, like moving or remodeling. So there were boxes everywhere. And so when she kind of came to and came out of her kind of blackout and couldn't remember what had happened, she was asking why there were boxes everywhere. And she was asking, why was there laundry on the bed? Because she was in the middle of kind of folding it and putting it away. So she had no memory of kind of these more immediate events. She still knew who her husband was. She had some of that long-term memory, but she lost some of that kind of those temporary memories that had happened. So uh, it was determined that she was experiencing what was called transient global amnesia, which is something that sometimes lasts for a couple of minutes or a couple of hours. And you just, you do, you kind of just forget everything that had happened. You black it out. And so this, they have a couple of different causes of things that can cause this having to do with your kind of oxygen levels and um, a couple of other things. One of them being stress. And we'll get to that a little bit later because they claim that's what's happened to Edward is that he's under too much stress right now. And that's why his memory is lacking. So I'm not sure if Mark Twain had any scientific basis for why he told the story this way uh, or if he had any sort of condition in mind. I don't even know if this was a thing back then, but this seems like it could be a somewhat of an explanation, um, perhaps, but there are some other examples as well. So then we have Christine Hyung Oak Lee, um, who was 33 when she experienced some uh, memory loss. So she actually lost her short-term memory and her ability to access connections between long-term memories. So she still had them, uh, but she couldn't always access them or make connections with them. And this was caused by a blood clot that actually caused her to have a stroke. So because of the stroke, she had lost all of that ability to kind of make new memories. So she actually had to write everything that happened to her down in this notebook so that she could refer back to it. And eventually over time, she was able to regain the ability to make those connections and to save um, those short-term memories and convert them to long-term memory. But for a while, all she had was this notebook and that was her method um, to, to make it. And she actually ended up publishing a memoir about her experience because I imagine that would be you know, quite a thing to go through. Then we have another example here. Uh, again, I'm not quite sure on the pronunciation, Henry Molaison. Mullison. Um, so he was 27 when he went through this actual experience. Uh, and this one was actually quite a while ago, but his is a pretty important example to give. So he had a psychosurgical procedure to help cure epilepsy. So he had epilepsy. And so they wanted to do this 
kind of experimental procedure to try and help. And so what they actually did was they like uh, drilled holes in his skull and actually sucked out part of, I believe it was, um, it was so part of his amygdala and his either frontal lobe or prefrontal cortex, or frontal lobe, I think area that was up here. So anyway, they had it sucked out. And because of that, he lost his ability to store or retrieve new experiences. And this actually changed the way that people thought about the brain and how it kept memories because before they thought it was kind of this whole brain experience, but now because he had this very specific part of his brain that was missing and they were seeing these very specific effects, they were able to study him and learn a lot more about that region of the brain. So he's studied by neurologists. Uh, they referred to him as HM and it led to some major breakthroughs in the field of uh, brain science. So he was a pretty important example when it comes to memory loss. So in the story, again, uh, Henry VIII gives the explanation that the reason why Edward, who's actually Tom, actually lost his memory is because he was overstudying. He was too stressed from all the pressures that had been put on him for studying and that he needed to take a break from school and actually just have some leisure time. And that was going to be what cured him. So thinking about that, I wanted to look at can stress really cause memory loss? So in that first example that we had, stress could be a potential cause, but there was another study that came out in 2016 to look at this specifically, just what's the, what effect stress has on memory loss. And so the experiment was actually done with mice. And so it's not really applicable to humans yet, but they'd like to try and duplicate the scenario in a way that they could test it on human brains as well. But what they determined is that stress can cause brain inflammation, which can ultimately lead to some problems, uh, including memory loss. So what they did in the study is they had these mice using a maze that they were familiar with. They had already learned how to get through the maze, but then they started introducing these more aggressive mice that kind of caused the other mice to feel stressed. And the ones who were feeling that stress actually began to forget how to get out of the maze. And the ones that didn't feel that stress were able to remember it just fine. So they did look a little bit um, specifically, like I said, so uh, at what the actual uh, implications were for this stress on their actual body. So they said the stress actually caused the immune system to attack the brain and caused inflammation and prevented new brain cell growth. It's very simplifying the process, obviously, because um, it's pretty complicated and I probably wouldn't even understand it if I dove into it entirely. But essentially that's what they found. And they also found that those effects were long lasting. So up to four weeks later, some of these mice were still showing some of these behavioral um, these behaviors that were related to the stress of not, want, not knowing how to get through the maze or not being able to remember how to get out of the maze. They kind of just cowered in corners um, because of all the stress they were feeling from these kind of aggressive mice that were introduced. So like I said, as far as I know, it hasn't necessarily been replicated using uh, human test subjects, but using um, kind of procedures they've used in the past where they study things in mice and then apply them later to humans, they determined that that stress could potentially be a cause for some memory loss. So memory loss is a fascinating topic. And so I just wanted to share some of the, you know, more modern day movies that use not necessarily this instant memory loss that we supposedly see in The Prince and the Pauper, but just this idea of memory loss in general, um, some movies that incorporate it. So we have 50 First Dates, Born Identity, Finding Nemo, and Finding Dory, technically, um, Maze Runner, Men in Black, The Notebook, X-Men. All of these have characters who either one day wake up and don't really remember who they are or what their story is, or um, they're unable to store those, uh, convert those short-term memories into long-term memory, or there's a device that erases people's memories. So this idea of memory is a constant um, kind of topic that comes up again and again in movies, TV shows. I think there was an episode of Full House back in the day where Michelle lost her memory because she like fell off a horse for a while. She got it back. So in most of these cases, they usually get their memory back at some point, but not always. 
So it's just an interesting topic. Hopefully you learned a little bit more. Have a good rest of your day.